Just play. Hey everyone, thank you for joining. Uh, we are now in uh, Adventure 5 of uh, Role Player Adventures. Uh, so, a quick recap uh, we were bitten by a vampire, fortunately so, and we got accused uh, of uh, basically uh, killing the king, I think, because the king is missing right now. And because of that, the setup requires us to have, so being a vampire, we do have a shadow boon. It says, during this adventure, the skill check dice limit is increased by one. I'll take that. That's free free for us. And then uh, everything is set up. We have all our encounter tokens as well as a, the XP sub all in the list. So let's continue. Um, hopefully, this is a, a much better outcome, <laughs> unlike our last two, because uh, if you can see from our death marker here, or for our last uh, in Adventure 3 and in Adventure 4, we did both exhaust ourselves. So hopefully this time we will uh, be a little bit more successful in our, in our adventure. Okay, great. So let the adventure begin. Uh, King Taran has escaped to another plane, and you stand accused of his murder. After a short trial, whose verdict was never in doubt, you are sent to Colback Prison to await your execution. When you arrive, Warden Mercy and three of her construct guards strip you of your weapons and clothes. One guard pours a bucket of cold water over your head. Another brands your shoulder with the symbol of crossed keys. They press an itchy gray uniform into your hands and leave you to recover in your cell. When you arrive, Warden Mercy and three of her construct guards strip you of your weapon and clothes. Sorry. Sorry. You got lost there. Another brands your shoulder with a symbol of cross keys. They press an itchy gray uniform into your hands and leave you to recover in your cell. If you're playing with one or two players, each player remove all armor, scroll, and weapon cards from your hand and set them underneath the Warden enemy cards. Okay. Says we remove, remove all armor, armor, scroll, and weapons. Weapon, scroll, not artifacts. Okay, weapon, armor, 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 scroll, scroll, weapon, weapon. Doesn't say me familiar. Okay. Armor, weapon, weapon. Great. Fortunately, now all our armor, scroll, and weapon cards are now set aside. So let's try to place it maybe somewhere here at the top and have warden, warding over it. Almost. Everyone detained here is a draggle prisoner of war. They are not fans of the King's Guard. Many hurl insults or shout death threats as you are escorted to your cell and locked up for the night. You find a few simple beds, one already occupied by an orc. Sound asleep. Faintly scratching the stone wall just above it, you discover markings written in Draggle Common. Peeling one of the mattresses back, you discover a chisel hidden underneath. The artist must have used it to scratch their message into the wall. We'll reveal discovery card number 98. Flip this mistake. Looking for 98. What is it? It's a chisel. And it's free. I'll take any free cost to get. Let's put the chisel here. And reveal rare card number 30. Ooh, look for rare card. What's it do? It's a chisel. <laughs> we have a weapon. 
And so is it one time use if it's like this? It is, right? Please, sir, party marker A and read entry A. Uh, if there is no event token, uh, if there is no X, if there is an event, okay, if there is no XP, otherwise collect the XP from this location, which we will. The sun sets and the lanterns of, of the prison are extinguished one by one. Lights out, one of the contract guard yells. Soon you are asleep in your bed, lost in a dream. A kobold warrior charges through a field of battle. He blows into a horn made of white bone, rallying an army of dragon warriors to his side. Somehow, you know that this is Kathandor, an ancient commander of the invading Dragul Horde. The immortal knight, the most famous hero in Nalos, charges forward under the Queen Gimnax banner. He leads a trap of halflings, dwarves, and elves. You find yourself impossibly trapped between two warring armies in a battle that took place nearly 2,000 years ago. So we, do we fight for the Dragul, A2, or fight for Nalos the Queen? Can we still turn around? Can we still? Maybe we, we can try that, right? So we fight for Nalos the Queen, A3. Even in your dreams, you are still loyal to Nalos. You draw your weapon and point it toward Kathandor. Two of his soldiers charge forward to meet you in battle. Okay, we fight the Nightmare Goblin. 22. So immediate battle, We're fighting the goblin and a bugbear. Bugbear. First time we're fighting a bugbear. There we go. The bugbear and there's the... And they're both night... Oh, so only the goblin is a nightmare, right? Does that mean only the goblin is the nightmare? So from this modifier... After rolling the dice pool, return all dice with values of 2 and 4 from the dice pool to the bag. What? What? After rolling the dice, return all dice with values of 2 and 4 from the dice pool to the bag. That's bad. And how can we defeat this? That means we have to adjust it. Okay, so now let's try to make this work. Uh, we need white, red, and green at the moment. White, red, green, and black. Um, since most of our stuff is gone, we can convert anything. I have to find out what, what we lost, right? I am colored blue, don't need blue at the moment. Okay, so we need white. Uh, green. And red. We do white, blue, green, red. And let's put in one black as well. Black, white, green, and red. So we have two more, a different color. We got a purple and a full. Another white. That's good for us. Okay. So now, where's our marker? Round markers. Very not. This is such a. It's like. We're going to return it to the bag. Does that mean I get to pick it up again? I don't think so, right? So that means this and this is gone. 
and it's returned just like that. Okay, we can put our six here. And then let me do it a green. Oh wait. Uh, we can flip the three and four. Before. I think let's try to kill this first, right? So, so at least we're down one. So our choice is that goes here immediately for a six. Is it both that are, are they both nightmares or is it just the goblin? I think they're both nightmares, right? So six. Would have been nice to have that four and two, right? For the bugbear. Uh, I think we have to. To red and white, we can. Oh wait, we have the other one, three and four. This is still have it. This is still yes, the resolute. We can use the resolute. To make the tree into a green. I'm gonna try to complete this first. I want to use that yet because that's a uh, one time use. Right? Is there any way we can make a five of the tree? That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. We can change any color to so if we can uptake the purple twice. Make it to six if you want to. This will be green, right? But most of the thing that changes with the uptakes is uh in the weapons and such, so we don't have those. This is the only one that we have. Wow, this is such a nightmare. It is indeed. <laughs> Just like that, we, we might be losing immediately in the first round because of this, uh, the ward and stuff, right? Change any green to any color if you want to. But actually, this already goes here as a green. It's good for us, right? Covers that one. And then I'm going to use that. Flip this. It's a four. So how we how, how much damage do we have? Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen immediately. That's not good. You can change any tree to any color if you want to. You can change this to a I think I think this is what we need to do. We you need to use the chisel. We're using the chisel so it's gone, discarded once used. So let's put that here to we'll uptick this to a four. So this is now a four, any color, right? And then what we can do is change this. Since the problem is the two, right? We, we cannot clear the two. We need to be manipulating it from here. 
there's no way for us to manipulate it unless it's a five, right? So now we just have to fit this here and change its color to a green. So it matches that. And that's the only way we can do it. Because this is three, yeah. So I guess that's our thing. Sorry, where's that one that I used? Uh, the three and four one. The resolute one, so it's spent file now. Okay, so now we get one XP and one gold because of it. But then we lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and the gold. So we add eleven. Exhaust. For us, now it's round two. Okay, I think we just draw this randomly since we are now at 15 already. In the correct color. So, one, two, wow, all purple, three, four, Five, six. Okay, that looks good. Throw here. We lose two, four, and two. We got the same cost six, three, three, one. We didn't even get a five or something. Okay. What is the best one to do, to do here, right? If we flip the one red, it'll be a six. Yeah, we can use that. Let's flip the one red to a six so we can place it here. That's our entrap. Uh, what else can we do? Two. I think we can only reroll, right? We can only reroll at the moment. Because most of our thing is in there, because this is, will be a four again. We don't need a four anymore. We just need a two or a five. So how much damage? Two. This is six. This is six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So another ten. So that's what twenty-five now. So we need to cover at least one more. So this is the recent one that we just did, right? Okay, so I think what we can do is flip this to a four, what does it do? Nothing yet. We can reroll the blue and the black. There's another option. And then we can convert it later if you want to. You can change any color to a six. Or the have a six. <coughs> so we only have one reroll, right? Let's use this as well. <coughs> so add a dice. Your class to the dice pool. Let's re roll this first. So that's our second one. It's a four. It means it just goes back. Let's re roll the black. 
using this. It's another four, it just goes back. The heck. I think that's it. That's the only thing we can do. Let's use our jackalope and pick up our familiar die. This is a green. That's a two. And then we can flip it, right? We can flip that. That a green and purple, right? We can flip that using this. So it's five. That's how many now? One, two, three, four. Okay. And then we just change its color from any color to red. So it goes here. Let me just cover this one up. So we get one X, we get two XP from that. But we lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven fatigue, which is a lot. What is the fatigue tokens? Five plus two more. So we're now at 22. So that's correct, right? That's 22. And that's the last round. We can still kill it. If we can't, we just need a two and a five. Basically, we just need more five. Then. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I think this is them forcing us to lose because of the nightmare tag. Okay, we got two fives. It's very good. Both the four and two is gone. So what we can do is this is a black, so this just goes here. If we can flip the black, we can flip the blue, which is very good. So this just goes here, and that is covered. So we get one gold because of that. And is there any way we can kill? We can convert it to a white. Can, oh, that's that's perfect. We can convert any red into a white. Going here, we actually survived that, so we get one more XP, and that is clear. <laughs> that was a nightmare. A real nightmare. It's almost all of, our, all of our stuff is gone. We already spent our chisel. Let's put this back. Rare card number 30. And then this our nightmare is gone. The very first encounter, and it's like that. Bugbear in. Okay, so now it says here defeat victory. The dragons are bound in chains. A6. It says here. The battle is long and claims many victims on both sides. By the end, the Dragul are dramati dramatically outnumbered. Many are bound and captured. 
Why don't we just kill them where they stand, you hear a young elf demand. They are to be taken to Kulbak, a dwarf answers, the queen wants them alive. As Kathandor is dragged past you in chains, he begins speaking to you frantically in a language you cannot understand. A young goblin interprets for your benefit. He says you fought well, but fought for the wrong side, the goblin claims. Kathandor's spirit cries out for justice. Free the dragul, bring Kulbak to its knees. A8. Each player returns all stamina and bonus play tokens in your fatigue box for the supply. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> so that means we slept, that's why. I thought I was about to die there. First game. And it's kid. Return any gold gain during the previous combat to the supply and return any gold loss to the party journal. Oh, okay. Because it's just... Each player refills your attribute road up to its scan. Each player returns any card you spend space and your to your hand. Okay, because it's a dream. If no player has the chisel weapon card in hand, reveal rare card 30 and add it to one player's hand. <laughs> okay, so basically it just resets everything because it was a dream. I'll take that. <laughs> That's a nice way of doing it. So you startle awake, a sunlight pours into the prison. When the doors of the cell block open, you are visited by a goblin. Though older in appearance, with spectacles and deep wrinkles cut into his skin, he looks quite similar to the interpreter from your dream. He introduces himself as Gundor. For weeks, he explains, all the prisoners have dreamt of Kathandor in a battle of fought nearly 2,000 years ago. Tonight, I dreamt that you would be the one to free us from Kulbak. After a brief, awkward silence, Gunder smiles. I will show you around, he says. Trust me when I say you will want a dr Dragul by your side. We should talk to Vrax. She's the leader of the Fighting 87, the gang running the exercise yard. If you want Dragul help busting out of here, she's the one to talk to. Or if you'd like, we could go to the archives. I have some old maps of the prison that could help us plan an escape route. You know there's a crack between stones along the back wall of your cell. You press your hand against the gap and feel cold air passing through. In the cell opposite yours, you see a Sheki with the eye of the starlit door carved into his bark. Mm. So if your starlit door is two or higher, which it is, you can approach the Sheki, A15, or we can use an item. Let's try to uh, approach Sheki, A15. Let's see what it says, because we are there. If you have the keyword Raven, which we don't, you approach the Sheki and place three five fingers under your right eye. A secret greeting to the starlit door. A smile grows across his face. Good to meet a friend, he says, and introduces himself as Nook. A raven with a gl glowing blue eyes pops onto the Nook's shoulders and stares at you. Seems she's taken an interest, says Nook. And the raven always follows her curiosity. I suspect she'll be a good familiar to you as she has been to me. Is that a free familiar? Record the keyword Raven. Raven. Find the Cursed Raven in the familiar deck. Okay, cool. We get another one. It's not there. It's here. Cursed Raven. What color is it? It's a black and white. So we need the black and white. So we we have the cursed raven, and then we're putting this in back in our dice pool. Now we can just move on. Uh, can we try to use our chisel here? So we go A98. Because we have a chisel there. Scratch the stone with your chisel. After a short time, you stop to check your handiwork. You barely made a dent. Somehow you need to bring more pressure to bear in your blows. Trying to scratch your name? Gunder guesses. Looks like someone else carved up the wall over here. Left quite a little poem, in fact. We can ask Gunder to translate the poem, which I think we can. Let's do that. What does the poem say? 
Gunnar clears his throat and proceeds to translate the poem scratch into your cell wall. Cathandor, do not sleep. Your people are in chains. Cathandor, sound your horn, or forever shall we remain. Horn of Cathandor, make us brave. The freedom we seek lies through your grave. A bit grim for my taste, he decides. Okay. So now we can actually go to the archives where we go to the chow hall. The exercise yard is where the uh, the other guards go. Uh, where the other one says uh, that there is a, uh, I'll say this. Uh, what was that name? Uh, the Fighting 87th, right? Let's try to research first and let's go to the archives. Right? I think that's what we want to do. So we're going here and we're getting this. Let's say encounter number three. So we're opening five, three. If you have the title Duntum's Abandoner, we don't. A few insecticide prisoners sit together on the ground, their arms and legs intermeshed. Inter the, insect the insectoid at the center of this tangle of arms and legs has its mandibles latched onto a perfectly round yellow ball. She tightens her grip, cracking the ball in half and swallowing it in whole. As she, as she reaches for a second ball, it becomes clear that these are not some strange, unfamiliar fruit, but rather insectoid eggs upon which she is feasting. Okay. Gunder lowers his voice to a whisper. Better not to think about it, he advises. Insectoids are not goblins. They have their own ways, and we must respect them. I. When the insectoid sees you, they untangle themselves and stand aside, allowing you to pass. A single egg rolls across the stone floor and stops at your feet. So do we want to fight? I think we just pick it up and return it to them, right? Because we're trying to gather some uh, help for us, right? So we go to 5-8. We scoot up the egg and hand it back to its mother. She accepts and cradles the egg in the crook of her neck. She stares at you with unblinking black eyes. She was affected by it. It's impossible to read what emotion she wishes to convey. You are surprised she speaks to you in Nalus Common. Not here, she says. Wouldn't be right. Wouldn't survive. You nod slowly, indicating you understand. The time will come, she adds, for the birth of new things. Cathandor will save us. The Dragoon shall be restored. Ending on, the, ending on that cryptic note, the mother lifts the egg up into her mouth and crushes it with her mandibles. You don't understand the insectoid's ways, but decide that it's not your place to intervene. Hey, we gained two XP because of that. I'll take it. We have three, six, five. We can now move to the next one. So we are on the archives. We go to E. The archives, uh, we collect the XP as normal. A large number of bookcases and boxes filled with rolled parchments have been cramped into a rather small room. Sorry for the mess, Gunder says. I've been trying to re reorganize chronologically based on particular. Based on particular, his voice trails off as headless construct guard stumbles towards you from the other end of the room. It bumps into Gunder, immediately grabs the goblin's neck, twisting it almost as if the deranged guard were attempting to snap off Gunder's head and take it as his own. Sparks shoot out from the cavity between the guard's shoulders, where his neck used to be, crackling like fireworks. Thanks. Constitution in the intelligence. I think we can do right. Find another way to disable him. We can do that rather than fighting at the moment. So we go to E3. It says here, the construct looks incredibly strong. Perhaps there is no way to disable him without risking a fight. Skill check. Introspection. Now we will find something. Introspection level two.
So now we have a choice. We get uh, we get a dice limit increased by one. So we get seven dices now. Blue, green, and red and white. Okay, blue, green, yellow, and white. So sorry, this not was not filled up. Thank you. I guess we do blue, green. And we get a white. Blue, green, and a white. We need four more. One, two, three. Give me another blue, please. Four. Okay. Hopefully, we get something here. Okay, that looks promising. I think. We get two white, which we can put here. We have a one green, which we place there. We can convert. I think we can flip one, which converted it to a blue. Oh, we can flip. Ooh, 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 wait, 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 wait. You don't want to use the chisel yet, I think. Uh, this is if we want to flip this, but we can do it twice. So we can change any green. We don't have any green yet. We can change any color to a red. Or purple. We don't want that. Change anything to six. Nope. We can flip a blue or a white. can flip the blue so it becomes two the other one is that we want to change we need to change the color first right so we can change the red oh, yes okay I think, that's, I think that's what we can change the red into a blue so we change this red into a blue then we use pickpocket to uh, flip two, which this will flip to two. This will flip to four. So those are now blue. They come there. So that goes in the span file, goes in the discard file. And then we just need to change the white into a green. How do we change that? Oh, wait, wait, I have this. I have, I have, I have that. Yes. You can use resolute to change any color. Three or four. And so this is now called green. Great. We get two XP because of that. And uh, it says pass. You come. You come up with a plan. So let's just put this away. It's a bit better for us, I think. Hopefully, this goes back in our hand. And says here E6. You notice the contract is standing on an oversized copy of power plays and takeovers. You pull hard on the tome, pull hard on the tome, and the contract stumbles wildly. Slamming into a bookcase with a shower of sparks, sprawled out over a pile of dusty books and splintered wood, he does not look like he's getting up again anytime soon. Thank you, Gunder says in a quiet, raspy voice. You search the contracts, constructs, but reveal this cover card 77. So I can get more tools. We need more tools for us. Seventy-seven? Hopefully that's useful. Oh, it's just a, ooh, it's a skeleton key. And look at that. Put that there. 
Uh, Gundar removes a dusty old map from a wooden crate and spreads it out over the table in front of them. They brought more Dragul here dead, dead than alive, he explains. There used to be an entrance to the catacombs from the cell block, but it's sealed. Can we use the chisel here, E98? Uh, picking up a copy of the Seven Habits of Highly Affected Minions, you use the chisel to scratch your initials into its cover. Gunnar seems deeply di displeased, but he doesn't voice his objection. Okay. Let's use the skeleton key on its own. E77, maybe we can get something. You hold the skeleton key in your hand. If that's what I think it is, Gundar exclaims, it should open just about any lock in the entire person. Fate favors use us this day. Each player returns one time from your fatigue box to the supply. Okay, so at least we know now what it used. What is its use, right? Uh, that's it. I thought we had something there. It's just we can rest. No, no, no. Don't think we need to rest yet. Um, let's go to the Chow Hall. Going to the exercise yard, or do we just go to, directly to the guard room at the moment? Yeah, let's try to go to the guard room immediately. So let's see because we have the keys, right? No, no. Let's go back. So talk to the exercise yard first. Let's go back. We're encountering this. It says here encounter two. Close this up. Five two. If you have the title eight to ogre, which we do, we do five five. A bugbear gang gang handles huddles around a large imposing figure. You recognize him as Tog, the ogre whose life is spared at Black Lake. He is fiddling with a shiny object, and a, and the bugbears have gathered around him to keep it hidden from the guards. When Tog sees you, he sa his, lights, his eyes lights up, and he pulls you in a for a powerful hug. As he speaks to the world, words bubble from his lips so quickly that even Gunder has trouble keeping up. He's, he says um, that he's eternally in, eternally in your depth, among other things, Gunder explains. I think he may be reciting poetry. Some of the words are quite archaic, even by my standards. Clearly, he likes you. Tog smiles and shows you what he was hiding from the guards, the severed head of a construct. He pushes it into your hands. A few of the bugbears hiss at the idea of relinquishing their prize, but the ogre snarls loudly, quickly settling the debate. Reveal discovery card 63. More items for us. What does this do? Oh, okay. Just a head. We have to use the head. Maybe there's like some sort of like a um, iris scan or something that will help. <laughs> okay, and we just move on to the chow hall. For that, because that's the only way, right? So we do see. Chow hall, if there is no XP, otherwise take the XP. Oh, getting lots of XP now. You, you've arrived at mealtime, and the chow hall is bustle of activity. Draggle prisoners eat and converse at tables as you stand in line for breakfast. All eyes turn toward you. An ogre grinds his teeth audibly as he stares at you. First clenched. Feast clenched, sorry. Dehydrate. An ogre finds his teeth. Sorry, a few contract guards watch with disinterest from the perimeter of the room. Don't worry, Gunnar says. If anybody gives you trouble, I'll vouch for you. Somehow, this does not put your mind at ease. An old prisoner bumps into you, spilling her bowl of hot gruel all over your prisoner's uniform. She screams angrily in the Dragal common as if it were your fault. Every prisoner in the chow hall watches for your response. Hmm, do we want to do that? Do we want to avoid a fight? I think we want to avoid a fight, right? So it's wisdom and charisma. Oof. I 
that's fine. That's, that's, don't show weakness. We attack the Null, so we go C3. The Null pulls a makeshift blade and her waistband lunges for your throat. Uh, we do a combat now for Null. 21. 21, 21. It's a crazy Null. <laughs> Low numbers. What does the crazed one do? Okay, put this nightmare back. To play a weapon card, you must move one stamina from one of your attribute rows to your fatigue box. Luckily, we don't have a weapon. Because <laughs> everything is at under Warden, we cannot use it at the moment. Okay, so it says green, white, and blue, and is that blue? Yeah, that's blue. That's blue and red. I think we just draw six. We go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it looks like we can complete. It just with this random stuff. Let's see if we can. I can only flip stuff, so please be forgiveful. Okay. Okay. We got two white. We can flip the blue. can flip the white and change it to a green, right? I think so, we can do that. We can try to do that. So if we flip the white using this, and then basically just change this color. Uh, how do we change the color of the white? Change any color to a red or white. I think we have to do this combo. So that's one, two, three. And this is now a green. Okay, that's three cards. We just need two more to create a... Oh, I think we have that fixed. Here, flip a blue, make it a two. There we go. All in this card, not expend. So we get one, two, XP. Then even scratch us. It says here, you gain res some respect with your fighting skill C6. You hold your weapon long enough to prove your metal. The guards, sensing that the fight is about to get out of hand, intervene. The Null is kicking and screaming, is dragged from the hall, and a few of the prisoners stare up, up at you with newfound respect. Now that your fight with the Null is over, you notice a group of goblins at a nearby table playing around the goblin vaults. If your Dragal favor is two or higher, which is now five, you can join the goblin in a hand of cards. Why not, right? Let's let's play some cards. Let's see what we can get. C14. Maybe we can get some money. Or we can get some sort of, um, I don't know. So we go to C14. If you have the keyword vault, nope. Goblin vaults is a game of gambling, gum gambling and bluffing, but above all cheating. The best players are known to have perfect, the art of palming cards and manipulating outcomes. The goblin welcomes you to their game, expecting to easily take your gold and they do. Gunder watches in dismay as you may as you allow them to win several hands while you pull your own winnings from your neighbor's pockets. When your tap is discovered, the goblin slaps you on the back to congratulate you. Gunder translates their praise. It seems you've proven your worth. <laughs> Gain two gold. Because it's cheating, right? So they, they want to have more cheating. Record the keyword vaults. So it means we can only do it once. 
find the pickpocket in the skill deck and add it to your hand. Ooh, cool. But I don't I think I already have it right there. Reveal one random skill, All right? Big pocket. Let's see. Big pocket, big pocket, big pockets. Oh, yeah, I already have it. So now we just reveal a random skill. Let's see what we get. Okay, so what we are getting is examine. So change one to three or five. I'll take it. At least we get some more number manipulations after that. Now we can use an item. Uh, can we use the constructs head here in the chow hall? C63. Take out the severed head. Let's pay one of this. And place it in the table, allowing it to glance around the room. If you're upset about a goblin in the far corner eating with her mouth open, the head announces, please press one. If you're disgusted by the bugbear with soup dribbling down his chin, please press two. To engage emer emergency rage pro protocol, please press any other button now. The severed head proceeds to make a beeping noise like an alarm. You cover its mouth and stuff it back to its bag. Okay, does nothing. Uh, what else can we do? I think that's it. I think we just go through the exercise here and see what we can find. So let's open this one. Encounter number one. Let's go here. Stepping over a sewer grate as you pass through the prison, you are startled with a hand grabs hold of your ankle. Shh! A voice whispers. The guards are watching. Don't look down. You ignore this demand. The sewers are too dark to see much of the shadowy figure. Below, you do recognize his, its voice. It's Tarek Nowlin. The halfling who led you on a secret mission at Black Lake. Okay, I think I understand. I'm about to make a very loud noise down here, and I don't want to attract any attention, he explains. I need you to create a diversion for the guards. Um, sure, make a guard think you're insane. Constitution and Charisma, I think we have that. Uh, 532. You scream at the top of your lungs, shouting whatever words or ideas pop into your head. Grabbing hold of another prisoner, you lecture him on the secret life of chickens and then dance around the constructs, reciting poems about mating rituals of insectoids. The guard seems uncertain what to do. If your king's favor is two or higher, each player adds one stamina. No, it's not. Skill check spiel, speechcraft. Uh, level two. Purple, green, and black, and blue. Okay. And we get seven? We get seven, right? Because of the shadow boon. I think. Get a purple in, a green, just in case. Get a green and a purple. But if we have those in hand. And I think the others are random. You can do it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Last one. Give me another green, please. Have a white. Let's do a magic. Let's do our magic. Come on, we can do this. Okay, we get a three purple, which is very good. We get two purple, which is very good. Okay, we have six blue. Okay, now we just need to have green. That one. Okay, you can change any one to a three or five. I think we can just flip the green. I think we have a way to do that. Mm. 
Where's that green flip? Blue, white, that's it. You can't flip that green. You can flip the five into a two. You can do that. So using that, and then you can flip this to a four as well. So we just need to change the red into a green, which we can do using this red into a green so this is the combination for that one so this is done now this is changed to four we need to change it to a green or we just have to uptick This is the other one that we have, we should have done. Okay, let's try to use this first. Let's just go and let's use our jackalope. Let's try to we take it. Oh, this one and see if we can get the number that we want. It's a two. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, it's a two. So if it's a two, we can put that here. Okay, and then we can use the entrap three or four. So about that to change it to a four. And then we use that the same thing that we have, which is change anything to red and then change it to a green after. So this changed this. So sorry, I think it's not visible. So we use our entrap first. So we flip it to four. Sorry, not this one, let's entrap. We flip a green, sorry, it's this one. Uh... Oh, because I was using this to flip red. Can we flip a white? And there we go. So, so this is our plan now is this one. We're using a flip or white. And change a white to a red. Then change a red to a green. So they're all in the discard pile. So we have two XP for that. And the guards are convinced of <laughs> are convinced of your insanity. Good for us, I think. So let's put in there back because we didn't put anything in the spent file. Uh, five twenty nine. Let's see what we get. What's here? The guards are totally convinced of your insanity, and your fellow prisoners have become quite enamored with your performance. The more expressive you get, the more excited they become. You hear an explosion echo beneath you. Alarmed, the guards break through the circle and grab you. Confused as, as the origins of the sound, they can only guess that it was something you did, not bothering to glance down at the sewer grate at your feet. Record keyword Nowlin. Okay, so we got Nowlin, and then we can now rest or move to another location, and that's it. So we continue on. We can rest if you wanted to. Just at least return these two. I think we have three things now that's important that we lost, right? Sure, why not? Let's rest for one. So let's put that marker there. Let's get one die. 
and we just get one restored to us. Not good. Set up four. This goes back to our hand. Okay, so we move on to the next location, which is D. Go to D, the exercise yard. Let's see what we get. Uh, we get the XP. It's normal. You glance around the exercise yard. A hop goblin lifts iron dumbbells in a corner, and a few insectoids sprint around the edge of the yard. A large group of goblins are huddled around the stone table. This is the fighting is 87, the gang Gunder told you about. When you approach, a large goblin with golden blonde hair places her hand on your chest, blocking your path. Gunder introduces you her as Vrax. Reveal title card 47. It says here, Goblin's inmate. At Kolbar, you met Vrax, the goblin gang leader of the Fighting 87. Vrax is a skilled leader and a devious strategist, and the surviving members of her battalion will follow her to the end. <coughs> Gandor, Gundor speaks to the gang leader for what seems like a long time. Then he translates her words as she refuses to speak in Nalus Common. Vrax says there is something you can do to help them, but she wants to know why they should trust you. You've heard that goblins value loyalty, it seems. Unlikely they would trust anyone who was not aligned with the Dragul. On the, hand, on the other hand, perhaps it would be better to show her that you will never turn on the kingdom of the Nalos. I think convince them, right? We 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 uh, we want them. As our... I think there's something wrong with the king stuff. So we're going with the Dragul going forefront now. Uh, convince them that you side with the Dragul. Do D two. You picked up a few words and phrases here and there in Drago Common. Maybe if you can make your argument in her language, Vrax will listen. If your Drago is two or higher, each player adds one stamina to any of their attribute rows from the supply, ignoring the usual. Anyone? Let's put one in black. So, what do we need is intelligence and wisdom, right? Let's put that in intelligence just in case. So it's more interpretation. We're doing a lot of talks. Talks, 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 talks. So we have two white, two blue, and white. So we can spend all the or whites to get two whites. And then our maybe one of our blues. Sorry, put it here. So we get one blue. And then the other four is random. The one, okay, take that. Two, three, four. Okay, we have all the whites we need. And we need to convert it. Oh, nothing. We got nothing. Even the purple, the four. We have to do a lot of converting here. Oh, okay. So first, we can change any color to, to any color. Fives and fours. We only have one fours. Okay. You can change any two fives. Flip it if you wanted to. Uh, one can change to three or five. Okay, well that, I think that's fine. We can use this. We can use examine first. I change this to a three. So 
So we can put that there. And then uh, we can use flip this, it'll be a two. We don't need a two, we need a three or four, right? Can change the green into any color, but then the green is a five. We don't need a five, we just need four. We might need to use a chisel for this. Is there are two reroll that we have, only one reroll, right? Let's flip the five first, I think. Let's make it a two. Wait. And so we took a blue, that's why. Can flip can flip any one and four of any color. So this will be a three. So this was a one before, right? So if it goes to a three, I think we just convert this. We can convert that. I think that's the their best bet. Uh, convert the green. I think we can convert green to any color. Uh, convert any green to any color. Is this? Oh. Or is that green to any color? So this is now a white. Is that there? So we just need to make four, three, two. Next is, I think we just need to do it for two. Uh, have to flip the five. Which we can use with this. So this is now a two. Okay, we just need two threes and fours. Okay, we need to reroll that. Add one dice of your class card to the dice pool. Maybe we use this. Let's get another blue in here. What we get? Give me something good, please. So one. I, didn't, I needed a four. To the opposite side, one and four. One is six, four is three. I think we might need to use our chisel. One, two, three, four. This is five. Let's try the shadowy Drake. Oh wait, you have another one. Uh, this this is flips them all, both only, not rerolls both. So I think we use our shadowy Drake. 
do reroll again one. Let's reroll this. It's another one. Let's reroll the one instead. That's my choice. It's the same thing because this one is what I can use the. Okay, so now I guess we have to use a chisel. Should we lose? Tag this to five and use our illusionist power. Return to stamina. And change this into three. That is our main thing. So this chisel is now gone. And we get two XP for that because of that. And where were we? Your draggle is limited but coherent. D4. <coughs> Sorry about that. Brax laughs when she heard hears you speaking Dragle, common. But if you're satisfied satisfied. After another long conversation with Gundur, he's left grinning to ear to ear. I told you, he said, it's fate. The Fighting 87th have been hoping to start a riot for a long time, but they require a non drago willing to help. That can't be a coincidence. Cathandor has chosen you for a reason. Gundor explains that Rax has managed to smuggle a potion of strength into the prison, but it's, it's Nalo's magic. It wasn't designed to be used by a drago. A sketch of a plan emerges. Every weapon forged in the smithy is kept under lock and key, but with magical strength, you can rip the iron gate of their armory from its hinges. When you do, the Dragle will seize their chance. Make no mistake, said Gunter. We will do whatever it takes to free our people. But be careful. The potion can only be used once. Reveal discovery card 88. Tell them it's the same potion. It's the explosion. No. Potion of strength. Okay, it's a one-time use. Zero. Okay. Note that unlike most items, the Potion of Strength can only be used one time. Once you use the potion, you must return it to the Discovery deck. Okay. So I guess what we can do is use an item for a moment. Maybe we can use the Construct, the head, D63. Maybe we can do something like that. Where is it? Pull the construct's head in being careful not to reveal it to the guards. It, it immediately sputters to life. Murderer, 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 the head shouts, frankly fearing that it might attract unwanted attention. You stuff the head back into your bag. Okay. Uh, I think we have to go now to the um, the archives, right? That's our plan. We go this back route. Okay. I think we can use a chisel. We can use a chisel here, D98. You use a chisel to carve out your own name into the stone table. Once the goblin snatches the chisel from your hand and begins carving into the table himself, Gundra translates the goblin writing for you. It says, Warden Mercy is a pig. He explains, grinning ear to ear to the goblin, politely places the chisel back into your hands. I think we need to rest for one. So we use, I'm just going to use one again, I think. I think let's use two. Two dice to rest. Ooh, ten. I'll take it. That means all of this is gone. Two, three, four, five, six. Very good. Very happy about that. This is flipped. And this is back to my hand. Good choice. Good choice. 
Okay, so I guess we just go back here as all as instructed. Let's see what we get. It is four. We have the title captor of Gimlix. We don't. You're stopped by a group of prisoners. Each has a purple eye tattooed on their forehead, indicating that they are a member of the Starlit Door. Small dwarf pushes his way to the front of the group and introduces himself as fervid. You notice a glassy, far away look in his eyes. I can show you the truth of Kolbak prison, he says. He offers you a drink from a small flask if you have the courage to see it for what it truly is. Do we trust it? Sure, why not? We drink from the flask. 524. You take a quick sip from his flask. Within seconds, your vision starts to blur. Your ears ring and the sound of gradually morphs into muttering voices. From the corner of your eye, you see the shadows rise from the walls and take two forms. The image of a cobalt warrior comes into focus. At first, Fervid is greatly pleased, but then the cobalt spirit lets out a terrifying high pitch scream. You're awoken with a sharp slap to the face. Somehow you ended up on the back. Fervid and the other members of Starlit Door are standing above you. When you, when you relay what you saw, Fervid appears enthusiastic. Cathandor's spirit is here, the dwarf explains. That means his horn is buried here as well, somewhere beneath the prison. The Star Door has been searching for the horn for a very long time, but be warned, he is a vengeful spirit. So we take Star's favor by one, and we can rest again and move to another location. So we just move to the guard's room. Time for a fight. The guards room. There is no XP, take it. Gunder's eyes the guards nervously. I'll wait outside. You enter a large room where Warden Mercy, a human woman, sits behind a large wooden desk flanked by constructs. She studies you thoughtfully as you make your way across the room. You may not remember, she says, but we've met before. We fought together under Commander Zalik against the Dragul. And now, here you are. Is it true? Did you murder the king? You're not certain what to do. The warden might not believe, be, believe you if you tell her the king tyrant escaped to another plane. You're not certain that you believe it, even though you saw it with your own eyes. We can convince her of the truth, that's right, huh? because that's the truth, right? That's what we, we don't want to invent a clever lie or something. So strength and charisma, which is good for us, I think. So we go to B4. B4. You tell the warden the whole story, even though it's the truth. You're not sure whether or not she'll believe you. Uh, it's true. Each player adds, nope, it's not. So skill check, persuasion too. Lots of skill checks. Okay, so we want red. She believes in D6. Okay. What's her choice? Uh, it was, was, sorry, strength and charisma. So purple and green, purple and red, sorry, purple and red. So let's, let's pause it two. So we get two purple, two red. I think we one red is enough. Yeah, I think one red is enough. And then the other three is random. The other four. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, all black and whites. Be lucky. Okay, we got six. We got two sixes, threes, five, and ones. Okay, we got a five purple, which is good. I 
that's the only thing we have at the moment. We can do something about this. Uh, we have the change to the one, two, three, four, right? We can entrap. Oh, flip it. You can only flip that. We have another one. Um, this one. We can change a one to a four. So using this, we can change it to a three. And then uh, we can flip the one, the white one. We can flip the white one. So it is one using this. What else do we can do? What else can we do? How do we get a five? How do we make a five out of these things? I think we need to reroll it, right? We can flip four, no, it's fine. If we have to reroll the white or black. There's my reroll for the white and black. That's my only reroll. Sure, let's reroll it. Give me something good, please. Two. Hey, that works. Wait. It's fine. That works. So we just flip that. Where is it? Uh, flip, 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 that to a five. And then change its color to a red. Change any color to a red. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then we use our power again. change this red into a one. Okay, I think that's good. It means we get two XP. Yeah, I think that's that's how it is. And we just figure this out. <sighs> she believes you, B6. The warden considers your words carefully. Perhaps I am a fool, she says, but I believe you. If the king lives, then there is still hope. She quickly skims a book, sitting on the podium in front of her and finds your name. We provide every every prisoner at Kobach with a bed and a warm meal, she explains. In exchange, we ex expect an honest day's labor. I am assigning you to be smithy. Keep your eyes and ears open. There's been chatter among the prisoners about the riot. If you're still loyal to the king, then... You remain bound to his service. If you discover any detail of their plan, come and see me. I'll need hard evidence, but if you can con if you can provide that well, maybe we can help each other. Is that understood? Record the keyword truce. Reveal discovery card 26. 
and the z of the z where the z and place one x key on it smithy it's a one circle so it's here so i have to go back all the way up we can use an item here uh Do we want to use an item here? What if we use the key here? Uh, the keys. Let's try to use the key. You reach into your pocket and grab hold of the skeleton key. While the warden is not looking, you scratch your initials on the front of her desk. That's it. Uh -huh. That's fine. Let's go back here first again. Go to G and see what we can get. Before we start using all our items. G, 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 G. We collected the XP. I am not assigned to the smithy, Gondor says, so I'll have to wait outside. A dozen dragon prisoners tend to forge and strike at metal over anvils, shaping hot irons into swords while guards keep watch. The heat from the forge is overwhelming. It's not long before you are drenched in sweat. After freshly forged weapons has a chance to cool, it's secured behind a locked iron gate in a small armory. In order for the gate to open, two guards must sim sim simultaneously insert their keys into separate locks opposite side of the room. There's a spare rounding hammer on the table beside you. Everything else here seems to be too big to hide in your prisoner's uniform, but the hammer is just small enough to fit in your pocket. You'll discover card 59. Is it a weapon? Give me a weapon. It's a rounding hammer. It's another of those things that I need to use. It's a 59. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so now we can use, let's use the hammer. Maybe we can do something G59. You take out the rounding hammer and pound it against hot iron, shaping it into a sword. One of the guards come over to admire your handiwork. He nods in approval. Staring down at the hammer, you are impressed by the incredible forces you are able to wield with it against the, the blade. If you have something sharp for it to strike against in the cell block, you might be able to chip away the walls. When the guard isn't looking, you slip the hammer back into your pocket. Each player returns one stamina, okay? So we can pound the cell block. Right? Let's go to the cell block and see. That's the only thing I can use. There's a key. Can we try to use the key? But we need two, right? Let's try to use the key. E63 and G63. You pull out the contracts. I know not the head. 77, sorry. E77. When no one's looking, you approach the iron gate of the small armory, insert your skeleton key into one of the keyholes. Unfortunately, opening gate requires two people to insert keys into locks on opposing sides of the room. A guard catches you fiddling with the gate and strikes your heart across the face. Get back to work. Each player adds two stamina to your fatigue box from the supply. Okay. So, it hit us because of that. Okay, um, what else can we do? I think we go back here. We go back to the cell block A and use the 98 with 59, right? 
So we use A5, now let's go back to A98 first, A1 first. If there is no XP, go to A1. Okay, great. Uh, so we just arrived at cell block. It says here, if there is no XP at this location, A1. If you have the keyword breakthrough, which we don't have at the moment, your cell is just as, as you left it. Above your bed, there are faint markings in Drago Common. There is also a crack between stones in the back wall where cold air seeps through. A shaky with the eye of the starlit door carved into his bark sits into the cell opposite yours. I think I already talked to Shaki. Yes, we did talk to Shaki. Uh, double check. Yes, we did already talk to Shaki. We can use the item. Let's use the... Uh, the what's this with the hammer right so 59.98 they have to spend one 59.98 see what, what that does you find the crack in the back of the wall of your cell you position your ch chisel near the gap and hit it with the hammer slowly chipping away at the stone a 97 okay Soon, there is an opening in the wall large enough to crawl through, which leads to a small chamber beyond. This is it, Gunnar saves. The entrance to the catacombs. Return discovery card 59 and 98. Okay, it's done. So that means we've used them. It's good. It's back. 59. And then 98. Chisel, chisel. <clears throat> Reveal discovery card 8 and place 1 XP on it. Catacombs, there we go. There it is displaced. The top. Record the keyword breakthrough. Breakthrough, and we can then use another item. Hmm. We still have the potion of strength and the key, the skeleton key on the smithy, right? So we have to do something with regards to the smithy to open that box. Maybe we can use the 63 in G. We can rest if we wanted to. We have like eight. In our XP file, let's try. Does it end immediately if we go to the catacombs? We have the. Because the catacombs is the actual exit that we want. We want to get our stuff first, right? Hmm. Maybe they would just build up the heart warden. But he has like, uh, I think the description was he has like two. Let's try to go to the warden and see what we can find. Let's go to back to B, the guard room. Uh, if there is no XP, B1. If you have the keyword unconvinced, no. If you have the keyword trust, okay. Or the title warden's trust, no, we just we just have the truth, right? Continue reading. Too afraid, too afraid to enter, Gunder waits for you outside. Guards are posted around the room. Many sit at the tables placed playing hands of goblin vaults. Warden Mercy asks you if you have found anything regarding the prisoner's plans. Nope, I don't want to give that away. And can we use the thing? Just the B63, right? Can we use that? What the, what does it what did it do? Can we put one thing? Okay. B63. You show Warden Mercy the severed head. She stares at it for a long while. It's hard to read her emotions, but clear she's lost. Thank you, she says. Once she has regained her composure and hands the head back to you, I already have a good idea who is responsible. They will pay for this. 
Here's something for your trouble. Gain two gold. Okay. <laughs> That's not good. And I think uh, we are going to the smithy. Let's go to the smithy first. Let's go back to the smithy. Let's go back to the exercise yard. Let's go back to the exercise yard D. Maybe we can use the head. This is a return the head, right? So if there is no XP, D1. If you have the rioter, warden skiller, nope. If, he's, if you insect so is raised around the yard and hobgoblin lifts iron dumbbells in the corner. Rax and the fighting 87 sit around the stone safe, discussing their visions of Cathagor's ghost. Can we use the D? So we go D63. So we use another one. D63. You pull out the contract ahead. Oh, it's the same thing. Ah. Can we use the key? Another one, okay. Show Vrax in the Fighting 87 your skeleton key. She snatches it, examining it carefully. She wants to know where you got it, Gunder says, translating the gang leader's words. But that's none of her business. He grabs the key back out of her hand and returns it to you. The two of them exchanges a few tense words in Drago common. Vrax says that the key will be helpful for our escape, Gunder explains, when the, when the time comes. Okay, and that, that's it. I think we rest. Let's rest for two, just to be safe. You get two dice. And ten. Take that. So this is ten. That there. That there. That there. Flip this back. Turn that and return these things. We have one. Okay. Let's go back to the smithy. Maybe we can do something and get that key. How do we get EFG? EFG. If there is no expectation, G1. Dozen or so prisoners tend to forge, tend to the forger hammer. At metal at anvils, there's an iron gate leading to a small armory where newly forged weapons are stored. Can we use the G63? All right, let's see what it says. You pull out the construct's head, being careful not to reveal it. The head immediately sputters to life. User query, and he announces, how many flash bags does it take to make a shield? Query resolution, only one. Just make sure they're standing in front of you. Then he falls silent, the life flickering out of his eyes. Okay, I guess the only way to go is to go to the citadel, right? To the catacombs. Let's go to the catacombs. Because I think I've used most of the stuff. If you have the keyword Nowlin, F17, so let's go to F17. Where is it? Where is it? Collect the XP from this location. Okay. You follow a crumbling stone staircase down to an old prisoner's tomb. Gunder follows you, wiping the dust from the plagues that line the walls and reading off the names of the dead. Ahead in the darkness, you glimpse a figure crunched in the shadows, prying open the stone door of a tomb. Ah, you made it, says Tarek now then. Lend me a hand. Gunder seems surprised to encounter anyone in this ancient catacomb. But he turns his attention to the engravings on the tomb. While Tarek pries the tomb open, Gunder reads aloud, Here lies Cathandor, general of the Dragul Horde, keeper of the Mystic Horn. Oh, please don't open that. Gunder's cries comes too late. The stone door pops open, revealing the bones of Kobold Warrior dressed in full armor, clutching a horn of white bone. Tarek looks the corpse over, confused. 
No, the golem anywhere, he says. He takes the horn from the corpse hand and gives it to you. I guess it isn't from another plane after all. As soon as the horn leaves Cathandor's hands, a strange blue mist rises from the carcass and forms into a shape of the kobold warrior. The spirit turns his eyes towards you. Huh. Uh, reveal rare card 37. Okay, we're gonna fight. What does the horn do? Ooh, it's a weapon. It's an art. Uh, each player adds three stamina to their fatigue box from the supply. Gain one XP. Oh, okay, you just gain one XP every time. Special combat. Following combat will re redirect you to a new storybook entry after the first round. Make sure to read the three possible outcomes once the first round is complete and turn the corresponding entry in the storybook. Okay, so we go to Ghost of Cathandor, 18. How heavy is this dude? Oh my god. That's a lot. I die. Okay, so red, purple, white, and any color. Okay, so we get six combat dice. I'm going to get random. Okay, so we, we need to defeat it in the first round, right? So first dice, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. What's with all these black cards? Um, okay. Is that green? That's, that's green and purple. We can only use black. We have two blacks here and white. So these things. We have a green and purple that we can use. Um, I think we need to draw one more card just in case. We use the vibrant. Add a dice of your class color. So we need the blue. Is that the one I wanted? Just to make sure in a minute. Or do we just want the jackalope? I think we just use the jackalope instead, right? And yeah, let's use the jackalope rather than the vibrant. So we add with that jackalope dice. There we go. So this is three, six. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why do I have eight? Why do I have eight? Let's remove that. Oh yes, because I had six. Command dice limit of six. I need to remove one, I think. Oh wait, I picked up one with a blue color, so that's why. Because I use the other limit. Maybe I should. No, we will win this. We can. It's in our destiny. Okay, so one, four, six, five, five, three, four. Okay. So we can immediately use a six here if you wanted to, right? It's any color. You can flip the black to go here, both blacks. Sorry, where's our marker? Where's our marker? Okay, I think I had a glitch. Uh, we were able to discover the catacombs uh, by combining the in the cell block. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I missed some. Uh, and then from there in the catacombs, 
we found out that uh, the ghost of Cathandor is inside. So we are now part in the combat role. Uh, apologize uh, if, if we somehow skipped a beat there, but that is what ex exactly happened. So after uh, opening the cell block, the catacombs pop up, and then we are now finding ghosts of Cathandor uh, from that point on. So this is our role for the moment, and we were able to color, cover the six. Now we just want to cover the rest in one round as much as possible. Okay, uh, so where do we want to go? We can, we can, change any color to red, so we can, this is a purple, right? This is already a white. Oh, sorry, this is five white. We can flip that if we wanted to using this. If we flip that, it will be a two. So one of the two is done. We can flip another white if we wanted to to another two. And then What are our options, right? You can flip the purple. <coughs> hmm. We can flip any four. So a three. So that is set there. That's one, two, three, four. So now I think we can actually complete this, right? We can change any white, uh, any one to a red using this so that's that one two three four five and then we have to change the black to something else how do we change that to another red i think we can do that we can change yes there we go get a resolute just like that so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So first we use entrap to flip it. So it's three, any four and it can be flipped. That's second die. We can change the white into red. We can change three into red again. <clears throat> can flip knowledge to two. Right, and then we can flip manipulate into two. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. And we can use one more, one, two, three, four, five. We can use one more to change blue, how to change the blue into white. Ah, we can use blue into white using our steadfast. And I guess that is our to be able to complete it in one turn. It says here, victory at the end of the first round. The spirit howls with rage. Leave any place cards in your discard space, F20. As the drive that goes back, Cathandor lets out a ferocious roar. Translucent golden armor forms around him, mirroring the dress of his corpse. Remove all purple dice, purple dice from the Catandor's combat card. So just this. Add the hardened modifier card to this combat. So we just need one more, right? Remove it entirely. We need the hardened one. What does it the hardened do? Oof. Oh, it adds more. Crazy. It adds green and a red. If you're playing in the... Okay, each player plays an armor skill or trade card from your hand in the active area of the party journal. I don't have any. Armor, skill, or trade. Oh, 
Oh, ah, okay. So I think we can use this to change the color if you wanted to. Trade, right? Armor, skill, or trade. Let's put that in the active pile, the honorable one. And then we just draw six. Return all cards in the active area of the party drawn to the owner's hand at the end of the combat. Place the round mark on the second space. So we lose four. Sorry, we lose uh, six. Use six fatigue. All right, and then we gain one, two, three, four. Four XP for that one. One, two, three, four, actually five. And then continue the combat. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six. We get two purple. Come on, give me something good. Okay, what can we do with this? You can change a one into a three. I might work there. I'm gonna flip the red, make it a three. Just need to get a five, right? How do we get a five? Can we change something to green? Change the green to any color if you wanted to. Why? Change anything six? No, we need to five. Uh, can change any six, any color to a six. We can reroll the purple if you wanted to. But we can use this to the five instead. And then use the honorable to make it purple. No, we need the green. Yeah, so it's a green. So now we have. We have to make one and four or six, five and six into a three. Okay. Oh, we can flip purple. We can flip a purple. We can still flip a purple. We can no longer flip a purple. My purple flips are here. Is there anything I can get back if I do my things? Nothing. Nope, nope, nope. We get hit for five if we do that, right? This is a... What, what, I need to convert it to purple in any case. There's no way for me to do that. I can change a red into any color, but then cannot. Oh wait, uh, I still have my illusionist. I still have my illusionist power. I keep on forgetting that. Okay, so we can use this into a five. So this is now a five. I keep on forgetting I have that. Uh, diplomacy, I will just flip to make it into three. 
And then I'll use my illusionist return two stamina to make this into a three. So we get one, two, two XP because of that. Oof, we succeed. We only use a little much. It says here, victory. The spirit suddenly evaporates. F4. The spirit of Katandor disperses. A blue mist again fills the crypt and gradually dissipates. You have awoken him, Gunder explains grimly. And his spirit is now bonded to you. He will haunt you until your dying day. I am sorry. I should not have let you come here. Yet it is good news that you have recovered Kathandor's horn. An object of such immense power will surely prove useful. Reveal title card 43. Okay, so that means someone will be always haunting us. Haunted. Oh god, bad. When you took the Kathandor's horn, you, dis you disturbed his spirit. Every once in a while, you think you see Dragul, general from the corner of your eye, watching and waiting for the right moment to strike. So that means he will always attack me. Let's put back the, no, sorry. Let's put back the haunted here. And then... Uh, if you have the keyword Nowlin, F18. We do. Go to F18. You look around for Tarek, but he has disappeared. You search the catacombs and find no trace of him. Stairs lead back to your cell, and a locked iron door waits out at the end of the passageway. If your entire party exhausted, mark the death. Uh, can we use the key here? What can the key do? Can we use the key? Yeah, let's try to use the key. So let's use one. Seven to seven. F seven to seven. The skeleton key fits perfectly into the lock of the iron door. You turn the key and the door swings open. F16. If you have the title Warden's Trust, 11. If you have either the Rioter or Warden's Killer, no. If you have the Distrusted, a Drank, nothing. Otherwise, keep reading. Just as you're about to head down the steps beyond the iron gate, Gundor grabs your arm. Wait, he says. You and I may be able to slip unnoticed into the muck, but the rest of the Drago will be stuck here for the rest of their lives. The only way to free them is to stand and fight. So we agree back. We agree go to go back and help the Dragul F8. Gunder smiles. You and I should be enemies, he says. We fought on different sides of the war after all. But here you are helping me and my people escape from one of your king's prisons. The Dragul thinks that all of the people of Nalas are monsters. Now I see that we were wrong. Uh, your quest is complete. We can end it if we wanted to, but record the keyword unlocked. So we need to start a fight, right? How do we start a fight? We go to the smithy. I think we just go to the smithy. So we go to the smithy. G. We drink that thing. I think that's the I think that's the the way that we wanted to it. Just drink it. Uh where was I? Uh if there's no XP identification, G1. Nothing yet. So I think we can drink. Let's drink the potion of strength and just start bashing our heads here. So we're going to drink the potion of strength. G88, hopefully we are correct. G88, you quickly chug down the potion and the muscles through your throughout your body painfully enlarge and contract. Filled with sudden fury, you grab the steel blade in front of you and snap it in half with your bare hands. Cool. Return discovery. Card 88 to the discovery deck. Let's see what happens. Start to riot. Now nah, let's try to riot. Uh, continue to G3. 
The gnoll seated next to you nearly falls out of their chair with a surprise, attracting the attention of the guards. You flip over your workbench, a guard sets loose an arrow from her crossbow, but you can barely feel the sting. As you grab the construct charging toward you by the neck, the prisoners cheer. You effortlessly rip the iron gate from its hinges and the drag will pour into the armory to grab whatever weapons they can. You can feel the potion of strength wearing off, so you decide to grab a weapon as well. If you have the keyword unconvinced, erase it. Nope. If you have the keyword truce, erase it. Okay. It's like, it's no longer a truce. Record the keyword potion. Change that. Potion. Uh, reveal title card 39 and 40. What are these? What are these? Title card, right? Title card. It's Warden's, Warden's Ire. So Warden Mercy gave you a chance to prove yourself loyal to Nalos. As far as he's concerned, you failed miserably. The Warden now perceives you as a threat. And Rioter. He says, when you start to the riot at Kolbak, the Dragul prisoners of war escape into the countryside. Hopefully, they will return home to the Dragul city states without pillaging too many villages along the way. <laughs> uh, remove all X3 from the adventure map. We did. Uh, place an event token at locations A, B, C, and D. Okay, this is new. So they say place an event load, uh, which is this. C, D, A, and B. Is that correct? A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Okay. Shuffle the weapon deck and reveal two cards. Okay, so increase the this one first as well. And this one decreases again. Uh, shuffle the weapon deck. Oh, cool. We will get weapon. Hopefully, we can get back our weapon. Uh, reveal two cards. Choose one and add it to one to one player's hand. Return the other to the bottom of the weapon deck. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, we have this already. Let's use the ancient tome. By the time you have chosen a weapon, the fight is already won. All six guard guards are dismantled. The Dragul triumphant. We need to strike quickly, Gundor explains, before the guards are able to request reinforcement, reinforcements. If we kill the warden now, the prison is ours. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the exercise yard first. So we have our reinforcements, right? So let's go to D. If there's an event locate, uh, token in this location, D9, there is. Dozens of prisoners are, and guards have battled for control of the guard. A gang of bugbears is hard at work disassembling a few of the construct bodies. A swarm of insecticides have surrounded the guard and are moving in for the kill. On the, on the other side of the yard, four guards have a cobalt prisoner surrounded and they are beating him with their batons. You only have time to save one. The cornered prisoner or the doomed guard. Or you can move on, leaving them both to their fates. Remove the event token. Uh, let's save the kobold, right? Why would we save the... Let's save the prisoner. D10. You charge towards the guards, taking them by surprise. The kobold prisoner looks to you, hopeful for a rescue. So let's do that. Gang, surprise construct. Uh, construct is seven. Oh, sorry, I have to replace this. And we need to take the gang of surprise. So gang, wait a minute. Where's the gang of? So this is a surprise, oh, there's a gang. Oh, 
So it's a gang of surprised constructs. So let's remove these stuff. Boost of cat and door. Um, I think we just let this be. So we get six cards, six lights. One, two, three, four, five, six. We convert something to white. Do that first. We need to rest before we even go to the. Okay. We got a five blue. We got a five purple. It's purple, right? It's not black. We need. Have we got a blue here? Hmm. This is a five or six. It's a six. We need a two. Can we get a two? I get a two here anywhere. No, 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 no. I can up tick. I can down tick one. I can down tick a purple. That's a green though, this is a green. No, no, but if I don't take it to five, then flip the purple using this. Do we have another one to flip the purple? Nope, so we flip the purple, now it's become two. So that's one now, so let's, let's use that. Sorry, during the first round of this combat, com combat dice limit is reduced by one. During the skill check, the first round, all time is spent with the dice, so the dice pool is returned to the supply instead. Mm. Okay, let's just say that we can't do that because we reduced by one. Just so we get stuck by two, three, five, six, six damage. I think we just use this. Six, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's 15 now. So let's do another round. So get one, two, three, four, five. Oops. All purples and we just need a, we need the red. If you can see that, I think it's red, so we're okay. Okay. Okay, so we get okay. I think we can make do with this. Can flip the five. Go to right. Change any red, any color to red. Where's that one? Change any color to red. This one. Change any color to red, which we can change this to, to a red. Now we need to change this to a white. How can we change that to a white? Hmm. 
Hmm. You cannot change it to white. Oh, okay. I think we can do that. So that's that using this and this, right? That's done. And then we have it. We have it. You can then change a anything anything to a red and red into a white. So that's that. Means we get one, two, two, two gold. And then one, two XP. Oof. You're farming this place. Might have placed the thing there inside. Seven. Gang off and surprised. So now the kobold is saved. D12. The guards scatter, unable to withstand your assault. Thank you, the kobold prisoner grabs. Then he flees the exercise yard. The other guards and prisoners are by now either dead or have moved to other parts of the prison. So the yard is empty other than the bodies left behind. So we just move on to the other location. We just go here. We go to C then. I'm sorry, this goes back. We need to rest. C, 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 C. Uh, C8, there's an event token. The rioters burst into the room, taking the guards by surprise. A goblin with a particularly crazed look in his eye emerges from the pantry with a lit torch and a canister of cooking oil. He begins pouring the oil over the room. The goblins appear ready to set the chow hall on fire at any moment, taking both the prisoners and the guards with him. Remove the event token. Uh, let it burn, but avoid the flames. Yeah, let it burn and avoid the flames. Sure, sure. C9. You take a step back and the goblin drops his torch, igniting the oil. Flame rips across the floor, engaging several prisoners into its path. Their, shriek, uh, their shrieks are high, pitched like a boiling kettle as they race back and forth across the room, flames crawling up their backs. <laughs> so we can, if we go back to D, we can go back to D if we wanted to, so we can just rest, right? Yeah, let's go back to D first. We just want to rest. So it says here, if there is no XP, go to D1. If you either have the Rioter, which we do, or Warden Skiller, D8. And the yard is empty except for a lone hobgoblin lifting iron dumbbells. <laughs> so I guess we want to rest for two. Make it last for three, I think, to be safe. Yeah, let's rest for three. So we'll take three dice. Six, 12, 13, 14. We're removing 14. So that's five. This is 12. Six. This is six. This five is 11. 12, 13, 14. Very good. Yeah, we need all the things we can get because we are going to die soon, I think. If we don't. Let's go to A, cell block, because that's we that's on our way. If there's an event token, A9. We storm the cell block with the other writers, prison, prisoners, but the contract guards here are ready for you. They've dragged in some bookcases from the archives, tip them over to use as cover uh, with their crossbows aimed at the door. The handful of dragon prisoners already in their cells have been locked up. 
When they see you, they bang loudly against the bars with metal traps and tin cups. The constructs let their arrows fly. Several prisoners standing next to you are hit. Remove the event token from this place. Fight alongside your fellow prisoners. A14. Yes, please. Or do we just move to the other location? Uh, we want to be fresh. Well, we can be fresh at E because it says we can be fresh. Yeah, so we, let's fight. Sure, A14. And what's A14? Uh, arrange gang of constructs. Same constructs again. This was... We do a gang off and range this time. Gang off. And then ranged. What is ranged? The start of the skill check or the first round of this combat, each player rolls a die and adds a stamina to their fatigue box based equal to that result. Yeah, let's see. Six. Oh my god. There we go. It's six. We use this instead. It's much easier. Okay, now during the first round of this combat, the combat dies limit is reduced by one. We get five only. Uh keep it random. One, two, three, four, five. You can do this, kill them. So we get a purple. Is that a purple? Or that's a black? That's a black. Hmm. You got a blue. Ooh, two red, exactly. Okay, what can we get? I'll have to double check that. Is that a purple or a black? That's a black. Okay. Okay. Uh, can't do anything with that one. A week. Can we do anything with week? We can change anything to purple or black. Can we lower the six to a blue? We can flip it. What can we do with the white? Okay, if we okay, I think we can tell so what we can do. We flip the blue to a one, and then we use examine, change it into a five. That's that. That's two, and then. And then I think we can change the color of that. So change the color, anything to red, and then anything to black. So that goes there. I think that's all the thing we can do. Then we suffer one, two, three, fatigue. All right, because I don't think I can do anything with the white to make it into a two. Before I, I need to double check. And because I already played four cards, I can only play two more. So I want to reroll it just for the sake of the test. Yeah. 
Yes, okay. So that's a two damage, means we are getting new here. Three damage, sorry. So let's get six this time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Cool. I'll take that. Means we get this two here and we get the blue here. So complete. We get two gold and two XP again. And that's it. That's completed. With this, uh, we might need the construct later, but remove the gang off and ranged. Because we will be fighting him. Uh, where were we? Uh, A10. Uh, Dragoon leave no survivors among the guards and the few prisoners locked in their cells are freed. Their cheers or battle cries shake the cell block as if their very breath could pull cool back down around you. If you have the keyword breakthrough, we do, A12. A few, a few prisoners charge toward the hole in the back wall of your cell, but Gunnar stops them. He turns to you. We can escape, he explains, but if we leave without eliminate the warden, she might call for reinforcements. Okay, we just move to, to the other location, which is, we go to E first. Oh, we can go straight, yeah, let's go straight. No, let's go to E first and rest. Make sure that I can rest. Uh, if there is no XP at this location, E1. Okay, we can rest. Can we use the constructs head there? E63 before, before resting. You snap the head back to the construct guard. His eyes flicker to the life and he pulls himself to his feet. <coughs> Each player returns one time the crafty box for the supply. E99. <coughs> Sorry. I had the strangest dream he confides to you. I made a pilgrimage to the Colossus. I wore long white robes, and I think I killed someone, a live human sacrifice for the gods. Does that sound crazy? It's possible that the severing of my head resulted in a permanent degradation of my ability to form rational thought. Reveal title card 38. Ooh, constructs assembler. Okay, says here. You help reattach a Constructs Guard head at Callback Prison. You're just not sure you screwed it on tight enough. His views on the world are a bit eccentric. Return Discovery Card 63. 63, 63. There we go. And can use another item, rest, or move to another location. Let's rest for two. Let's let's rest for three just to be safe. Resting for three. Okay, it's five, eight, nine. Five, one, two, three, four. Okay, good enough for me. Make sure that I'm okay. So we're sending this two, 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 three, three, two, two. And that's done. Okay. Oh, we did the rest. So we put another one here. We have two already, I think. We rested here and then we rested again. So any one more rest and we will reduce our cards. And we can move on to the other location. That's correct. Right. Okay, we go to B now. That's our only place. Give me my weapons, please. B two. 
The rioters pour into the room, overwhelming the guards. Warden Mercy ignores the others, focusing her rage entirely on you. She arms herself with a crossbow that hangs from the wall. Well, she says, at least now I know where your loyalties lies. If you somehow miraculously survive this, perhaps the dragon will keep you as their pet. She takes aim at your head, purely hoping to plant a bolt between your eyes. Remove the event token from this place. If you are playing in legendary mode, Okay, not so we oh it's, we don't need this. Warden Mercy 58 is there. Let's put this back. Did we get our weapons back? Uh 58. Victory. Okay, we don't. We don't get our weapons back yet. He has a red, white, green, green, and then a black one. We can make sure we get a red and a white, I think, and a green, sorry. Let's get a red and a green. Let's get another green just to be safe. There we go. And then the other three is random. One, two. Okay, it's in blue. Something good. Oof, all sixes. Six green is good here. Okay, I think we could work with that. Uh, we can... Six and a two, right? For the green, five and a six. Uh, what can we do? What can we do? We can change anything to a six. We don't want that. Oh, we can flip the green to a one. I think that's one of our thing. First, or flip, flip the green, flip the green. Yeah, I know I have that. Where is it? Reroll only. But I can't flip a green. Blue and white, change the purple to a four if you wanted to. We can flip a black if you wanted to. There you go, oh, it's purple. Three and four. Nope. Change the red to any color now. Okay. So we can't flip it. Okay, so let's do this first. Uh, let's change any color to a no to red. There we go. We can change any color into a white. So we're using steadfast. 
for this. So that's now a white. Okay, and then you can uptick purple, so it's four, and then change that to a red, it goes there. Now the green is our problem. Then we do the green. I didn't know I cannot flip a green. Flip that. Can we change it to a green? We can reroll a green or let's try to reroll the green and see what we can get. This one. Oh, good. Thank you. That's three cards now. All right, four cards. We have one more for the three. Is there anything we can do? Oh wait, I think we use this instead. Yeah, because this is one XP, weird. Mm, nope, that's fine. I think we'll take that damage. So we get three for five, damages for five, and then we get to roll again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we don't even have a green there. Okay, we got a three. We can do that. What can we do with that? I think I can change any color. Yes. No, but I, I want something that I can use. Yes, there we go. Use this, any red to green. That is done. So we get one, two, X uh, to gold. And then one, two, two XP. You gain the upper hand, B8. With her last gasp, Warden Mercy slumps backwards into her chair, so she smiles at you. Even in defeat, the rioters begin dismantling the contract bodies of the guards, pulling out the gold and silver components and pocketing them. One of the goblins runs up to you and shares her spoils, placing a few golden gears into your hands. Now to get out of this wretched prison, Gunnar says quickly to the catacombs, gain two gold. Okay, so she is dead. Maybe I threw it here. I think I have probably threw it here. Yes, I, I, I even threw that inside there. Later, uh, for cleanup, I'll just fix it. Uh, and put him back. Reveal, return the title writer to the title deck. Okay, just a minute. This is 39. Return the title Warden's Ire. The title deck, it's 40. Reveal title card 41. Warden's Killer it says here, you have killed Warden Mercy, but there were no witnesses who would testify against you. All you have to worry about now is your own conscience and the Warden's ghosts. <laughs> oh my God. And I'm haunted as well. Uh, return any cards under the Warden Mercy enemy card to their owner's hand. Oh, please, thank God. And I made it rest if I wanted to. We don't need to rest because I think it's the end. We can move to the other location. We can go to A now. And do the end, right? There is no XP at this location. A1, A13. Yeah, we can end it now. So we can go to the cell block. We can go to the end. 
Oof. That was long. <laughs> so from the catacombs, you discover a brick wall tunnel that leads to northward under the walls of Kullback to freedom. Reaching a fork in the tunnel, Gunder parts ways with you, suggesting that it will be best for you both not to be seen together. He takes the tunnel towards Sabek. You rest for a moment and let the real realization sink in that you can't return to the capital yourself. You have not proven your innocence, and you are still wanted for the murder of your king. Whatever comes next, your path leads away from home. If you have either the keyword truce or unconvinced, no, we don't. If you have the keyword egg, nope. We got... I deleted that. Rioter, no. Warden's Killer. The brickwork tunnels leads you, you out to a trail above ground, which leads you steeply upward. Soon you are high enough to look back on Kullback, small crisis from one of its towers. Many of the prisoners join you on the trail, including the Fighting 87. Some smile or wave appreciatively as they pass. It seems you have made more than a few friends among the Dragul. In Nalos, however, you are wanted for regicide, and now you've killed one Warden Mercy and freed enemy soldiers, no doubt there will be a bounty on your head before dawn. Uh, we got construct samplers. As you continue on the trail, you meet the construct guard whose head you reattached. At first, you are concerned he might attempt to arrest you and drag you back to the prison, but he quickly puts your mind at ease. I've come to the conclusion, he explains, that my dream was a vision of things to come. I am taking a pilgrimage to the Gurling Colossus. At first, I thought my mental capacities had become impaired, when my head was severed, but now I know the truth. I have seen my destiny. With that, he bids you farewell. Uh, and we get haunted as well, which says, You decide to rest for a while against a tree. Just as you settle in for sleep, you hear a rustling in the forest. You scramble to your feet and see the spirit of Cathandar standing before you. His translucent body is distorted almost beyond recognition. His face transfixed in a silent scream. Oh my god. And finally, goblins inmate. That's it, right? As you continue down the trail, it suddenly occurs to you that the name Vrax was already known to you. You remember the stories of Goblin during the war. She inspired much fear and hatred among the King's Guard but also begrudged respect for her strategies. She was a worthy adversary and also likely considered a hero among her own people. By dawn, you are... Now it's for the conclusion. You are many miles from Kullback. You have not seen signs of pursuers, but you know that the hound of gangs and bounty hunters are already on your trail. Messengers will distribute wanted posters with your name and descriptions across the land. Soon there will be no place for you to hide. After many miles, the forest gives way to an open land of rolling hills, through, your, through which a river snakes its way toward Bogrut Swamp, home of the Frogkin. Common sense tells you that you ought to avoid any civilizations, but pangs of hunger and tired feet drive you toward Bogrut in hopes of rest and a hot meal. After all, there are no safe roads now that you are an escaped convict. Accused of murdering your king, all you can do is press forward. With any luck, you'll stay one day ahead of justice. And that's it. That's the conclusion. Erase all keywords. Sorry. Erase all keywords. Return all stamina cubes on the rest track to the supply. Yes. Oh, this one. Uh, return all map coordinates, which is 1826. There we go, 26. Return all cards in the active space of the party journal to their deck. Okay, even this. Uh, 
to their deck. Okay, so this goes back to 101. Uh, return all the bonus play tokens. Mark the box on the campaign track. Let's see so who's that. Okay, uh, and then mark the box on the campaign track. We did, We're done. Five, each player returns all stamina cubes in your fatigue box in the supply force. Return all cards in your spent pile, which we did. We now advance your characters. We may now advance our character. So let's return all of this stuff back. Let's do a marker on this. Six, four, and that one. Turn these. Okay, so how many we XP do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, that's one. One, two, three, four, five, that's two. One, two, three, four, five, that's another one. Two, three, four, five, another one, and then four. Is there a limit on combat, combat dice limit and bone play limits? Uh, check advancement. <laughs> hmm. No, there is no limit. Okay, so I guess we do one, two. So increase this to eight, right? And then one, two, for the cards. So this is now seven. And my question is, do we just now go to what? Uh, do we upgrade our health? How much do we upgrade our health? If two XP now for twenty five plus, we can do two XP and then one mastery track. Yeah, why not two XP? So make this twenty six. Is the master track track useful though? Why not? Let's put a. I think our weakness is the red. So that's all good. Lose the most of our titles. Now it's growing. Okay, and then we can then. Go by. So we have how many money? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So let's check the armor. Skill. And we'll buy one of each. Scroll. Weapon. 
and obsessed trait. Scabbard might be useful. I think I'll take this one minus charisma, so this will be seven. I'll think about this two, four, six, seven. So we're taking haggle. Change any color to black or purple. Minus gnome. We're not a gnome, so six can buy it. Two, three, four, five. No, can only buy for five. So the only thing we can buy is the leather boots if we want to. Basically, re rolls black or purple. No, let's keep it. So let's, we have five saved. And that's it. Armor, great. A scroll. And a weapon. And that's it. Uh, that's our adventure five of escaping. 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 Crack. And cool back. <laughs> thank you for joining yeah there was an unfortunate thing that happened there i think i i have to fix my uh, uh my obs <laughs> and go from there so uh thank you thank you for joining hope you continue our continue joining us in our journey completing up to i think we need uh six more six more adventures because it goes to up to 12 and then there's like one um one side quest that you can do if you want to. Yeah, look at that. The deck is now getting so big, so fast. We can do almost anything now, as long as we have it. But then we were able to, the, the funny thing is we were able to survive uh, even without a weapon deck. That's the good thing. So it's all the way. So that's it. Thank you for joining. Have fun.